from Charleston, South Carolina, Mark Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how you guys doing? You guys, you're better than me because I'm nervous as hell. Never done anything like this before. Public speaking is not one of my strong points. I mean, there's a be some of the lights. Uh, so yeah, I like to I like to go out and try and conquer some of my fears. Uh, one of my biggest fears when I was younger and still is was uh, being shot. <laughs> this seems like it would suck. It looks really painful. So um, so for a career choice, I decided to go out and become a cop. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Never did get shot, by the way. But um, yeah, God, that was an interesting career. I remember my first arrest. Uh, we went and arrested this prostitute for shoplifting. Evidentially, evidently she wasn't a very good prostitute, but she didn't have enough money to buy groceries. Uh, so I'm down at the station. I'm, I'm writing up the paperwork, and my training officer is standing right next to me, and uh, he starts laughing. I have no idea what he's laughing at. So I look up, I'm just writing my paperwork. I look up, and she's got her shirt up over her head. <laughs> now you would think, free show, ooh, woo, girls going wild, yeah. No. This woman had no nipples. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. You guys think that's gross, but you're just hearing about it. I had to see it. <laughs> it's tattooed forever in my brain. No amount of therapy, hypnosis, or alcohol will ever get rid of it. <laughs> now, I'm sure a bunch of you are wondering, where the hell are your nipples going? <laughs> a typical person doesn't walk around without nipples. Well, I'm not going to tell you because I think I don't want to see anyone throw up in here. Tell us! What? You guys really want to know? Okay, you asked for it. Somebody bit them off. <laughs> it was a prostitution accident. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. <sighs> it's tattooed in my brain forever, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you guys asked. I wasn't going to tell you. Yes, both of them. They were, uh, you didn't want to leave her uh, looking funny or anything. God's sake, so go after both of them. I remember another time I was uh, I was still a cop. I was off duty. I was driving with my grandparents in the car. My grandmother's in the passenger seat. My grandfather was behind me in the back seat. And we were just outside of town. I got pulled over. I was like, shit, what, what? I didn't sign up for this. I became a cop. I'm supposed to be immune from getting pulled over. But this cop comes up and tells me I was speeding, but he's going to let me go to the warning. So I'm like, yes, whew. As he's walking back to his patrol car, my 90-year-old grandfather rolls down the window and says, Officer, I apologize for my grandson. He only drives like that when he's been drinking. <laughs> Thank you. 
a shootout. <laughs> yeah, I got suspended for that too. <laughs> that was a little worse. So I decided that I would switch careers. Uh, I've always had this horrible, another fear of mine was a horrible fear of heights. Heights are just awful. I don't know if anybody else here shares that. But uh, so with that, I took that and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to become a helicopter pilot. <laughs> you guys are laughing, but that's what I do right now. <laughs> that's my day job. I work for an EMS company here in Cleveland. You could get flown by me. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, and the thing is, it's not flying that bothers me. It's tall buildings. And there's a difference. As a EMS helicopter pilot, I never thought it through very well that you have to land on tall buildings. <laughs> so, I'm flying in, we, we land on the helipad, and I'm like, yeah, no problem. And then the medical crew's wheeling the patient in, I think it always scares the patient, because I'm standing there clutching the, head, the rail, <laughs> on the top of this building saying, it's too windy up here, make it stop. I mean, people that are seriously injured will see me coming, you know, they'll have a rash of injuries, they'll see me coming back. Like, you know, I don't think I'm so injured anymore. <laughs> Just a flesh wound, but I'll be fine. I show up, I'm like a faith healer, but I don't think anybody's injured anymore. So, uh, the scariest thing I ever did was uh, online dating. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if you guys ever did any of this. I, uh, god, there's so many websites to choose from. Let's see, there's Match.com, PerfectMatch.com, eHarmony.com, PlentyOfFish.com. That's just, that was clever. <laughs> Plenty of fish, huh? Um, yeah, I can't remember where I was going with the joke. Um, no, I remember I went, with, I went on a date with this girl one time, and I couldn't help but notice when I saw her, she looked really familiar to me. I was like, I, you know, you know when you've seen someone, I'm like, I know I've seen her before. And I'm pretty sure this girl tied a few on before I, uh, before I showed up, because she was all over the place. She was just, woo, look at me. All of a sudden, the strangest thing, she lifted up her shirt. No nipples. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Come on, give it up for Mark Brown. Charleston, South Carolina.